What does content look like, do we think, in, in 2019? You know, we've had, over the last few years, there's been obviously lots of fake news. People have got sucked in, not sucked in, but have been taken, I suppose, and influenced by a lot of the digital startup media outlets. And now we're starting to see people to come back. Not that they completely lost it, but readers are starting to come back to the trusted sources. What, what, you know, what, what does it look like in 2019, that, that content piece? Well, you know, and, and Jackie will be able to speak to this as well from from the kind of edit side. But clearly, the media business is still in flux, and I don't think anybody's really landed on what the revenue model is going to be. And that's why this you're still going to see a huge amount of experimentation. But you know, brands that were worth a hundred million dollars not so long ago are now shedding staff. I think there will always be a place. Um, for you know the kind of your halo brands, the likes of you know I, I say it, but the, the likes of the Wall Street Journal or you know the, the New York Times, because they have a history, a heritage, uh, and a credibility. Um, and I think where you know in the fake news era where things like brand safety are so crucial and can turn a company's kind of share price on its head overnight, I think to be able to align yourself with a brand that you know has a very strong definition around it I think is kind of invaluable when you're taking a leap into the content space particularly if you're not used to that I think the change has been as well that it's no longer the news editors who decide what's the big news of the day you know we use data to look at what our audiences are interested in and and that's what's dri- that is what drives the news. Um, I think whether you know whether um, and as a as a as a news publisher, what you've got to look at, you have to be adaptable. You have to talk to every one of your mem- every member of your audience, whether they're it's you know somebody a sort of somebody in their sixties who's reading the print version of the Wall Street Journal every day, whether it's somebody under twenty five who's. Um, got the app and is you know reading online or through social media it's about it you know it has to be everybody's authenticity and it has to you have to really you know customization is a big word in news in media generally at the moment you've really got to know your who your customer is in in their, all their you know their variety their inf- infinite variety um, and that's the way that you stay relevant you know again we're talking about um, um, talking about making a traditional brand relevant, you've got to do that with heritage brands as well. You do. You have to shift if you're a 65-year-old brand and, and, and offer what the consumers want. But I think as as the world goes crazier, I think consumers are looking at those those brands that have got a legacy and they've got a history and I think that trust as you mentioned is is paramount I mean the I think the Edelman trust barometer said that the uh, belief in you know that professional trusted journalism has in, has increased sort of 60 percent I think that was the, the 61 percent which is the highest it's been since 2012 which you know I think I think that's that's fantastic but on the other side you know you've got a whole generation that are getting their news from social media which is the mm-hmm. least trusted side of things so it's a, a really interesting dilemma I think yeah news always has and always will come from absolutely anywhere it used to be the village pump now it's you know it's twitter it's instagram the point is that when it's it's really it's credible and trustworthy if it comes through a known if it's delivered to you through a known and credible source a trusted source Uh, and i think that has always been the case you know you can't rely on on sort of whispers and rumors but there are certain sources of news that you have proven that they're credible and trustworthy I think that has always stood and it will always stand I mean there are so many players in the field now you know you sort of say well where you know which is the trustworthy news where's the fake news coming from you have to go to your trusted source agreed I mean wouldn't it be nice to know where it's going in 2019 Um, (laughs) I mean that that point is fundamental right and and the the trusted credible um, high-end sources of content are, are ultimately where the where the real news can get can get generated, but I don't know that through the course of 2018, seeing um, you know, how social media evolved. Uh, I think earlier today there was news that WhatsApp is limiting um, news forwarding to only five recipients for each piece, so that that sort of almost st- 
the social networks are starting to take notice of the fact of the influence that they can have on both real and indeed on fake news. Meanwhile, to sort of slightly segue, I guess, back into the prior conversation, you've got a lot of brands who want to stand for purpose who are starting to blur the lines between mm-hmm. what's a brand and what's a publisher. Equally, you've got publishers who are starting to do direct consumer sales of other things, the Sunday Times Wine Club, whatever you want to call it. So I think, so I, I have no idea what's truly going to happen in 2019, but I do think the there's going to be this increased sort of blurring in terms of who's a, who's a news provider, who's a news disaggregator, and who's who's trying to sell you something. Um, and it's going to be fascinating to, to be on that ride.